Albuquerque police, by the way, are stepping up patrols not only at Balloon Fiesta Park, but also around it. They are trying new things to catch criminals. APD says it has set out some balloon gear this year as bait to catch any would-be thieves. Officers say there's typically a spike in property crime with each fiesta. Now on Saturday, officers actually visited hotels, contacting managers and balloonists to make sure they were taking everything out of their cars. 20 years ago, the crime was uh, break-ins were fairly common. Uh, it was very annoying, very costly for the balloonists to come here. They have reduced the number of people that are just hanging around looking for an opportunity. APD says increased patrols will continue throughout the entire balloon fiesta. A disturbing story to tell you about this morning. Deputies say two young boys witnessed their mother's brutal murder in the metro area over the weekend. Officials say the 12 year old called 911 Saturday night saying his dad, Jerry Chavez, dragged his mom out of the shower and stabbed her multiple times. The boy says his parents were going through a divorce. Neighbors say Chavez had moved out, but his son told deputies he came back that night. Now those that knew the family for years say Chavez was a church going man and are just shocked by all this. Did you guys suspect that anything bad was going no. on at home? Oh my Lord no. Jesus, no. No. And uh, like I said, we didn't expect this is a shock. It's a shock to us. Very yes, shocking. Chavez is charged with murder, child abuse, aggravated battery, and kidnapping. Deputies say the couple has had some domestic violence issues in the past. Investigators are looking into a second house fire in one neighborhood. Yesterday, Albuquerque firefighters responded to a house fire in the 3000 block of 10th Street. This is Sky News 13 here with video of smoke billowing from the attic. Now, no injuries were reported here, but another fire that sparked Friday night is being called suspicious. Bernalillo County firefighters put out the flames here. But this home is a total loss. Now, a woman was treated for smoke inhalation in this incident. Jury deliberations continue for a man accused of killing two tourists who were passing through New Mexico. Last week, the jury was unable to reach a verdict in the trial of John McCluskey. Jurors are expected to reach a verdict this week. McCluskey is charged with the murders of Gary and Linda Haas of Oklahoma. They were traveling through the state back in 2010 when they were carjacked and later killed. McCluskey could face the death penalty if convicted. New Mexico is at the top of another list, but in this case, it is not a positive one. You see a new article published says that New Mexico is among the top 10 most dangerous states in America. Now, this is according to an online article on 247wallstreet.com. It shows the FBI's latest statewide statistics. According to the website, New Mexico is the fourth worst state for violent crimes. It also noted that New Mexico has among the highest rates of drug use in the entire country. Family and friends of an Albuquerque man allegedly killed by his neighbor say they want justice. They rallied to send a message to the district attorney recently. We believe from the beginning that uh, Donnie Pearson should be charged. Donnie Pearson drove a car. He drove a car. He hunted my son down. That is Isaac Mitchell, father of Jonathan Mitchell, who police say was shot and killed by his neighbor, Donnie Pearson, back in March. Now, police say the night he died, Mitchell was first spotted outside a neighbor's home with a gun. This happened in Albuquerque. Now, Pearson apparently went looking for Mitchell, who had walked home. Mitchell fired off a shot from his driveway as Pearson pulled up, according to authorities. A few seconds later, Pearson fired back, killing him. The case is now in the hands of the district attorney. Now to the government shutdown. It continues today. And now some of New Mexico's furloughed federal workers say they are about to be hit with big financial problems. Congresswoman Michelle Lujan Grisham met with a group of furloughed workers yesterday to hear their concerns. You see, most worry about mortgages and paying utility bills. Some shared stories saying they have tried to reach out to those companies only to be told that there is nothing set up to deal with this shutdown. They don't have anything set up for federal employees. When, when we said both of our incomes um, are gone until this is resolved, and so they gave us seven days, and then they'll shut everything off. 800,000 people become a bargaining chip in Congress. That's not the way Congress is supposed to work. Well, the Congresswoman says that in the next few days, she plans on networking with local and national banks in hopes of getting some kind of help for these federal workers who are in danger of missing loan payments.